Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at the new filter function of Excel and this function is going to change the game. So things will never be the same again once you understand the filter function. It's going to change everything. And hopefully in this video, it's an introduction to it, but hopefully I'll give an idea as to why I feel that way. Now, a couple of things to know straight away. The filter function is currently being rolled out to Office 365 subscribers of Excel. You need to be on Excel 365 to have this. And it's being rolled out as I speak. It is also available in Excel Online. So if you don't have it in your 365 version, if you don't have that, you can play around with it in the online version until you have it. And this function is basically a formula alternative to the filter feature of Excel, something that pretty much everybody uses to filter a list by conditions, to either find what you want or to then select some numbers and sum the values of what you're filtered or maybe to filter it and copy and paste that range somewhere else. Now these are all things that the filter function can do, but being a formula, it's going to be automated, and even better, we will be able to embed it within other formulas, and that's where the real magic takes place. So what I've got here for this example is I've got a list of training. There are three types of training that our employees need to do regularly. They need first aid training, they need Excel training, and they'll need call handling training. And this is a list of you know, the dates that their current training expires, so they need to do it again. What I'd like over in column F, G, and H is to return some information about people whose training has expired. We need to get them booked in to do it again. And I'm going to get the filter function to do that, just in the same way that I could filter the list that's currently in columns A, B, C. So over in cell F5, I'm going to start to write the filter function. And you see it prompts me for three types of information. The array to return, what to include, like what's the filter criteria, and then what to do if empty, what if nothing is returned. So to start with, the array to return, I want to return the name of the person and the date that the train expires. So over on the table on the left, and it is a table, it is formatted as one, I'm going to select columns A and B. And you can see in the formula, it references them using the table structured referencing as the name and expiry date column. I'm then going to put in my comma, so it moves us on to the include argument. And this is where we put our filter criteria. Now I want to know if the training has expired. So I'm going to ask if the expiry date column is less than today's date. And I'm going to use the today function to do that. I'm then going to put in my comma, and for the final question, if empty, what to do if nothing is returned, I'm going to display the text all up to date. And then I'll close this formula off and run that. And nice and easy, that has returned all of the employees who have got training that needs to be renewed. And for those of you who might be new to dynamic arrays, this is a new dynamic array function. So it returns an array of results and you can see a blue border around what they call a spilled range. I'm currently in cell F6 and I can see in the formula bar, the formula is grayed out because it does not reside in that cell that is spilled into that cell. But if I click in the one above cell F5, it does live there. And I can see in the formula bar, I could edit that if I want, and we will be. So that's my first demonstration of that filter function. Just to quickly demonstrate the dynamic nature of it, if I went over to the table on the left and came to the bottom of that list, and if I was to add in somebody else, like myself, and put a date to this in the past, you can see the table expand immediately. 
And I can also see on the right hand side that I've actually already been added in to the list. So I've currently got a zero value in expiry date. But if I put the 13th of Jan, which is in the past of this year, and let's say I need some Excel training. And now I can see that I've been added to the bottom of the list on the right hand side. So the table is dynamic on the left because it's a table, but now our formula is as well. We have this dynamic array. I'm now going to go back and delete myself from that table. So I'm no longer there. And let's come back to the formula on the right because in cell G2, I have a drop down list of the different training courses. And if I choose first aid, I would like that to filter the list underneath, which at the moment is showing everybody who needs new training. I want it to just be first aid. So if I come back into the formula in cell F5, and I've currently got the criteria that the expiry date must be less than today. Now what I'm going to do is wrap a set of parentheses, a set of brackets around that criteria. Now, any experience writing complicated logic with a function like sum product in the past is going to help you here. I'm going for a reasonable pace in this video, and this might start to get a little bit much for some of you if you're quite new to this. But we're going to add in the second condition, and I'm going to do that with the asterisk, which some of you may have some experience of. But we use that to create and logic. I can now open up another set of parentheses. So I want to ask if the expiry date is less than today and, which is what our multiply sign is there, also something else. And this something else will be if the training, if I select column C or training, is equal to cell G2. I can now close that off. So each condition is in its own set of parentheses. If the expiry date is less than today, that row will turn a one, otherwise a zero. If the training at the course is equal to G2, that returns a one or a zero. If you multiply two ones together, two trues together, you get a true. So it's forcing that they, by multiplying, they both have to be correct. If I now press enter, that list is reduced to only first aid. And if I was to select call handling, only call handling. And if I was select first aid, only first aid. So pretty awesome. Now let's take things another step again. Because if I delete what's in cell G2, then I get that everything's up to date, which is not true. I would like that to return everybody who needs some training. So back into that formula, I'm just going to add in a simple if function. I'm going to ask if the value of G2 is equal to nothing, an empty string there, comma. What do I want to do that's equal to nothing? I want to return everything. So I'm going to recreate the filter function that I did a few minutes ago. Filter the name and expiry, comma, what's the criteria? Oh, I didn't quite select that table correctly. Let's try that again. Name and expiry, there we go. Let's use the training records. And then after that comma, I want to ask if the expiry date is less than today. Comma, I'm going to put all up to date. If it's not, close bracket for that filter function, and then a comma. And I can see in the box underneath, because this formula is growing pretty quick right now, that I'm in the value with false argument of that if function. So I'm running this filter function. If that cell G2 is empty and then the previous filter function that includes the drop down list. If it's not empty, I need one more bracket on the end of all of this for the if function. And when I press enter, that is all of the records that are due, but if I choose call handling, just call handling, Excel, just Excel, and if I remove it, back to everything. So that is classic filter function. Now in this example, I've now got this email column on the right. Now I've got another sheet at the bottom with some details, 
where I have the name of a person and an email address. And I want to return that email address. Now for this, I'm using classic VLOOKUP, but we're going to use the dynamic formulas that we've just created. So for the email address, it's equals VLOOKUP. The lookup value is the person's name. And this is where I'm going to bring in a hashtag. Now that hashtag or that pound sign refers to the dynamic range. So I can see it grabs all those rows and also both columns, which is something of interest because that is the dynamic range. Now if I persevere for a moment and I'll put my comma in, the table array is over to the detail sheet and I'll click in the corner to select the whole table, which is just a table called details, comma. I want the information from column two, the email address, comma zero for false. Close off the bracket for my VLOOKUP. So when I press enter, I've got all of their email addresses returned. VLOOKUP, but because I'm using the dynamic formulas, is dynamic. It instantly grew with the list. And here we go. If I was going to change column G for call handling, it gets smaller and first aid, it grows back. I want to remove them all and back to that. So that will grow and shrink with our data because it's dynamic. Now, because the original filter function brought back two columns in the array, I do now have this other column that's not really providing any use for me in column I. And as you might be thinking, I could hide that with an if and a function, uh, just like you may do with VLOOKUP already. But I want to take a different approach because in the original filter function, I got it to return two columns, which is amazing. That filter function could have returned 20 columns. It's no problem. But I'm now going to revisit it because I'm going to edit it so that instead of returning both columns, I'm going to ask it to only return the name column. So I'm gonna change that one to name, then I'm going to find the other one. There's the other filter function, training name and expiry. And that one is going to be name. And if I press enter, I have an array that only returns the name. I'm then going into that first cell. I'm going to take a copy of that formula, escape this. And for expiry date, I'm going to paste it in there and just change the two references. So for this one, instead of training name, it's going to be expiry. And where's the next one? Here it is. Instead of training name, that's going to be training expiry. And if I run that, now we've got train expiry. And that is going to fix my VLOOKUP over on the right. So instead of using filter to return all of the columns, which is amazing, but because in this situation, I wanted that VLOOKUP to be dynamic with it, among other approaches, I've decided Let's do a filter function for each column. Let's keep the array separate because that's going to make my life easier, maybe when I get to the VLOOKUP function. Now I want to do one final example in this video. I'm trying to be careful not to make this a three hour video <laughs> because we could easily do that with filter. But as I say, the real strength of this filter function is I view it as a utility function. It may not necessarily be the way you do things because there's loads of other great ways to do things but it has the potential to do what VLOOKUP can do and what SUMIF can do and what some product can do and index match and all these other ways we've used them. We've now got a new player in town who could do them instead if we choose to. So what I've got in columns I, J and K is I just want to return how many people are due for an Excel training, how many people are due for first aid training. And yes, I could do that with account ifs on the original table set. There's no problem there. But I want to show the filter function doing it as well. Now the filter function is capable of doing more than count ifs, because we can build in more complex logic and, and other things that we're not going to go into in this video. But generally speaking, you know, in the example I'm doing right now, count ifs could do this quite happily. But as a demo of what I mean when I say it's a utility function and it is more than capable of handling it, let's start with Excel here. So it's got to be an Excel course and it's got to be due. So we're writing a formula very similar to what we've done. 
equals filter the array to return. I'm going to return the names. Just the names will do. Comma. What to include? Okay, well, let's open up a set of brackets. The expiry date column has got to be less than the today function. Our close bracket, multiply for and logic. Open bracket, the training course has got to be equal to the one in cell I1, which is Excel at the moment. Close bracket for that, comma, if empty, return zero. If you don't find anything, just show zero, that will do. Close bracket for that. So that's the filter function. If I pressed enter on that, it returns the names, which is not what I want now, but that's what it does. The filter function returns an array. What you do with that array is up to you. What I'm doing right now is going back to that formula and I'm just going to wrap a count a function around it. That's what I'm doing. So that when I press enter, I've basically created a conditional count, which as we've said, count ifs can do. But the thing I guess to note is that although it's a count a right now, that could have been a sum, an average, frequency, VLOOKUP, hyperlink, whatever function you want to use. And that's what makes it a brilliant utility function. It brings back an array, what you do with that array, what formula you use it in, or what sheet you put the data on, and what you do with that is up to you. So it's extremely versatile and powerful. Now to finish this off, I do just want to come up, take a copy of that formula, and I'm just going to put it into the other two as well. And for each one, just simply change the cell reference. So that's going to be J, and then in again for call handling, and instead of uh, I, that's going to be K. And now I've got one for each. <clears throat> so I've got a little summary at the top of how many people are due. And it's unaffected by its drop-down list. I didn't connect it to it, although we could have, but the list below it is. So there's a few examples there in this video of this amazing filter function and what it's capable of doing here. It's definitely something you wanna get your teeth into and explore because that's how we learn. Now in the description of this video, I'm going to put a link so you can access this file that I've used in this video. I'm also gonna put a link to how you can get access to dynamic arrays. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.